Palestinian philosophy, it is still the best practices for today's classrooms. Uh, St. Augustine was born in 354 to 430 AD. This is significant because he lived and was influenced years after Socrates and Plato would be. Therefore, he is considered a Neoplatoist. He's an idealist. And, um, and because of the location where he grew up and lived, he had a lot of influence from his Egyptian uh, Christianity because his mother was that. And she actually would lead him to Christianity when he was 31 years old, but not before he went through several years of discovering who he really was and, um, and had a child with a concubine. So um, he is considered a scholar of ancient philosophy, which is significant because he also part of his inspiration came from scripture. He read Acts, he read the workings of Paul and Peter, and he, that is influential in his own philosophy of education. So he is considered the Christian philosophy of education father. Um, he had three strong tenets of Augustinian philosophy that you'll notice are important today, is student-teacher relationships, our classroom environments, and a curriculum that leads the students to self-reflection and acknowledgement as a creation of God. And that's challenging a public school environment, but those are things that we, as Christian educators, we know that those are important. So student-teacher relationships, they're based on strong relationship. They're not usually weak. They're not usually something that you go home at the end of the day, we don't think about your students anymore. They are, um, he related them similarly to what a, a mother would have for her children. That, that kind of relationship as the best for students. And he also saw that the teacher was essential to establish the tone of the classroom. If the teacher came in and they were unhappy, if they were frustrated and they didn't, didn't feel pleasure or happiness as he called it, then the students wouldn't either. He also felt like um, that they were representative of the success of the classroom, and I think that we would all agree that that absolutely is good practices for today. Um, he also saw that these children's perceptions became their reality. So if you didn't pay attention to what a child felt because you didn't think it was accurate, you were missing the opportunity to be able to actually teach them and give them opportunity to learn. Um, he recognized a strong correlation between that teacher and the failing and unmotivated student. He saw in his own teaching um, as a scholar that if he did not address those students that felt like they would not amount to anything, that they were capable of learning, then he would struggle to be able to teach them. We also knew that. We also can agree with that. The character of the teacher was paramount to the success of the student and their peers. If a child saw that the teacher's character with one of their friends was also off, then they were all affected in their success. Again, one of those things that we know is best practice today. The school environment must be comfortable to learn and be safe for questioning. This is a Socratic method type of teaching, one that asks questions but leads your students to find answers we know that that's the best classroom because we want to give them the opportunity to discover. Uh, the curriculum delivery within the classroom needed to be one that was best for their own learning styles. It needed to be um, not rote memorization, but one that allowed the students to actually embrace and learn the curriculum. That's also best practice. Um, and it must allow for the pursuit of knowledge, what they called school that uh, for Greek. If you didn't have a safe learning environment, then, it, then your students would actually not be able to find that pursuit of God and wisdom. And they felt, and we'll talk about that in a second, he talked about that, that was the pursuit of all learning, needed to be a pursuit for God. So, a safe learning environment includes a space that the teacher has set time for examining verbal and nonverbal communication. So that is more than just what the teacher says or what the students have said. It's how they're interpreting how they're reacting, what else is going on for them that's more than just the lesson that's being taught. And then finally, he felt the ultimate purpose of education truly was the search for truth, unity, and happiness. And if in that, it was truly a search for God. He recognized that hearts were restless until they could find peace in you. And I didn't capitalize the why there, because he didn't capitalize it. But um, he is literally a pursuit of God. And finally, if you didn't lead your 
your students to have self-reflection, to see themselves in the need of God and his redemption, salvation gift of Jesus, then you had missed instruction and your job entirely. Because if you didn't start by teaching the students that they needed God in their life and who they were in him, then it didn't matter anything else as a part of his philosophy of education. You'd miss the opportunity. Thank you so much.